Hi YouTube, I normally make a lot of creatures from movies and that kind of thing um, but this time I wanted to make one up and I wanted to just use really cheap parts like these plastic flower pots um, and then just bits and bobs really like aluminium foil anything that's cheap basically to start with so I cut a few of the larger flower pots up just to give me this rough shape stuck them all together with flooring PVA glue which is much stronger than normal PVA and then just stuck these bits of crumpled aluminium foil on. Next I coated this shape with kitchen paper and PVA glue and you can see it's basically just paper mache. You can do several layers to make it even tougher. Next I used a really excellent product called Milliput which is a two part putty. You mix the two parts together and then it starts to set rock hard in about four hours. So I made loads of teeth basically separately and then I put the gums on. While the gums were soft, I just pushed the teeth up into them. I've also made this aluminium foil tongue. And I've got a couple of um, Lego shapes that were basically like a small version of the Lego Death Star. And what I've done is I've just started to sand them down, basically sand all the bumps off them. This is one with the bumps still on that hasn't been sanded. And then this is what it looks like after sanding. Nice and smooth. I'll fill this hole with a bit of milliput as well. So I end up with two really nice kind of dome shapes. You can see some of the loose teeth there. They were just pushed in to the gum line. Next I used a whole load of cardboard tubing from inside the aluminium foils that I've collected for a while. Uh, just to make some legs. Um, you can see I've gone around the edge of the top of the eyes here. Again just with some aluminium foil and then I'm starting to coat it with the kitchen paper and PVA glue to stick it all on. The tongue here again I've coated that with kitchen paper and PVA glue and that's nice and solid now. You can see I've taped around all the edges for the legs and they've all got a wire inside as well so that I can add some feet on later. Um, with the tape you just go round and round and round so it's really nice and strong at all the joints. For the main body I just used some leftover earth wool insulation. It's basically just this kind of soft padding type stuff and I basically just made a really tight kind of ball of that and just wrap sellotape all the way around it to make it kind of even tighter and firmer. So it really is quite solid. And then you can see what I've done is I've just drilled holes down into these legs and then I've just put these really long screws down in there and that's gonna keep all the legs on nice and tight. Next I stuck the head on with some more of the PVA glue and when that had dried, I then went in with kitchen paper again and PVA glue like the paper mache just to add a skin layer over the top of everything and stick it more firmly onto the body. You can see I've done the underneath uh, lids of the eyes so they're all done in the same way that I did the top one um, and this is really starting to come on now but I still need to make his feet. I also made this rough shape of an abdomen. I end up actually making it a bit bigger than this but you get the idea that's going to go roughly there. So here you can see I've started adding more detail, these little mouth parts at the front. The tongue is still removable at this stage so I can change position of it if I need to. I've done these kind of little rims around the edge of the eye, little tiny bumps in the corner which should look nice when they're painted and then I've done the ridges at the top of the eyes as well. I made a couple of really long antennae and they were just made with a couple of twisted wires for each side and then just bumps of aluminium foil added down the whole length of it and then all coated with the kitchen paper and PVA glue to make it really strong. The wire was left at the end and so I could drill little holes in the head and stick the uh, wire down into the head to make it really firm. You can see I've done little rims on the legs and I've done all the uh, feet now as well. The feet are really cool, they've got these kind of slightly cone shape to them and then these like little claws on the end of each one. Each claw has a couple of twisted aluminium wires in to strengthen it. I did the same thing with these little thin mouth parts because it makes them kind of bendy and it means later on they're not going to snap off and they are drilled in and glued on really firmly as well. I also added a really wrinkly texture all over the back of him. This is just, again, this kitchen paper with PVA glue on and you can kind of squash it together to form all these little wrinkles and you just do it gradually over the whole of the back of it. But this should paint up really nicely and show up all the ridges. You can see that I've gone over the legs as well with layers of PVA glue and kitchen paper and that's really strengthened those up. 
the PVA glue is so rubbery it just makes it really really strong. Okay for the first painting stage I just painted the whole thing in this kind of reddish brown colour. Um, I think in my head I had a sort of a red ant. Uh, that's what I was kind of going with, that kind of colour scheme. I'm using System 3 acrylics for all of these first painting stages. Okay, I hadn't used my airbrush for a while, um, not since I made Slimer from Ghostbusters, and I had quite a good result with Slimer, so I thought I'd get the old airbrush out again. And you can see I've just started building up uh, layers of colour with this. So I've got like um, orange type colours, that I've put in and then I've done yellow basically on the sort of top surfaces or just blending into the orangey bits and that seems to work quite well. So I've used yellow as a sort of a highlight, you know, as if it's where the light is catching it. Um, I've also used red that I've airbrushed on the ends of his claws. That makes them pop out quite nicely. And then you can see just, yeah, combinations of red, orange and yellow. In the mouth or mouths should I say I painted the gums with a brush first just in pink or purple and then I've airbrushed over the top so I've airbrushed some like brown and yellow onto the teeth and then I've hand painted the white edges to the teeth painted his tongue pink as well um, so it's starting to look pretty cool at this stage but there are still a few things that I want to do to him so for all the bits that I airbrushed I actually used um, Liquitex acrylic inks so they're much more liquid than the um, System 3 acrylics. But I carried on using System 3 for the gums um, before I did any airbrushing to those. You can see all of these ridges and things really start to show up now. If you haven't got an airbrush, you can still get really similar effects to what I've got here just by using a lot of dry brush techniques. That's where you just get a tiny bit of paint on your brush and then you basically almost dry it on a bit of kitchen paper and then just brush it very lightly over all the top surfaces and it will bring out all of the ridges and things as if they've all got little highlights on them. All of the deepest places remain nice and dark. If you happen to um, overwork them and lose that darkness, you can always use washes of a really dark colour. When you do that, the wash sinks down into those really deep spaces. So apart from his eyes here, it might not look like I've actually done very much, but I used a really bright yellow and I've basically just dry brushed over a lot of the really highest um, places and that's really kind of made a lot of it pop. It's hard to see on the video unfortunately, it doesn't really um, do it much sort of justice but I've also um, done some little light edges to the gums and that sort of thing and lightened up his tongue a little bit. I've stuck his tongue in position now so that's nice and set. Uh, but yeah, the eyes I've just used again really bright lemon yellow with again system 3 acrylics and that's made his eyes pop nicely. Um, all of these little edges and things as well I've brightened up all the yellow so they show up more. You can see where I've dry brushed the yellow over the top um, just brings out all these little wrinkles and things makes it much more consistent. He actually appears a lot redder in real life so I thought I'd do another bit of video where I put my cutting mat in behind. Because the cutting mat is green it should show up the red colour a bit more. So here he is all finished against the cutting mat. Hopefully you can see he's a lot redder. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been useful for some of you. Thanks to Milliput for sponsoring this channel. Check out my other videos if you get a chance. There's quite a lot of creatures from various movies that I've made. Hit subscribe to see anything that I make in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.